30 minutes with you and uh, I'm going to share something very important. Very, very important. Amen. Amen. And uh, I have titled this teaching, How to Manifest Your Desires. Can we say it? How to manifest again? Again, how to manifest your desires. How many of us have good desires in the house? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And how many of us want those desires to be manifested in our lives? Amen. Yeah, today I want to teach you how to do that. So how to manifest your desires. Amen. What is a desire? A desire is a strong want. A desire is a strong yearn. A desire is a strong longing. A desire is a want. A strong want. To bring a caution here, I am a teacher. That's why Pastor John said, let's take notes. <laughs> All right, I, I teach. So, you know, we'll be, um, we'll be doing this with me. All right? Praise God. Hallelujah. So, a desire is a strong want, it's a strong yen or a longing. But why are we discussing this in the first place? Why are we discussing this topic? Why are we discussing how to manifest your desires? It is because that is the reason why you are here. Let me say that again. You were giving birth to <laughs> for one reason, and that is to manifest your desire. <laughs> don't worry, if you, if you doubt me, don't worry, I'll prove that to you. You are here to manifest your desire. Before the beginning of this world, you were in the bosom of God. And because God wanted to express a particular aspect of himself, he allowed you to come. And that bit of God that he wants to express here, he placed in you. That is the reason why you are here to manifest your desire. Someone, I'm sure, is asking, is it my desire or God's desire? <laughs> I know some of us are asking that. But let me share this with you. God's desire is your desire. I will prove that to you in a minute. Amen? Amen? But I want us to think a bit. I'm a teacher, so that is what I do. I make us think. Let's say I'm going to think. Say it again. I'm going to think. Again. I'm going to think. Because we are thinking beings. How many of us know that? We are thinking beings. Say, I am a thinking being. <laughs> so you, we are here, we are discussing this because we are here to express our desires. By the time we finish, if you do not know what your desire is, you would know it today. And you go out there doing everything possible to manifest that desire. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good. So that is the reason why we are discussing that. Now, let's look at Genesis 1, 26. 
And the Bible says, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. I like the diversion of the message Bible. Do you have a message Bible? Do you have, do you have a message Bible? Um, online. Online, okay. Yeah. The message Bible says, Genesis 1, 20 says, God spoke. Let us make human beings in our image. Listen to this. Make them reflecting our nature. I like that. Because see, when, when God said, let us make man, the man used there isn't the Hebrew ha-adam, the man. It is man in general. So God said, let us make human beings in our image. Listen to this. Reflecting <laughs> our nature. Reflecting our nature. Another word to reflect is to manifest. So, what did I say the title is? How to manifest your desire. So God said, let us make human beings in the likeness of our image. Make them reflecting. Make them manifesting. Make them show forth our nature. You are here to show forth God's nature. Write that down. <laughs> Say, I, I'm here to show forth God's nature. Now listen, how many of us know that God does not dwell in time? God is not bound by time. So, when God spoke from the beginning that let us make human beings in the likeness of our, of, of our, of our image, reflecting our nature, you were there. Amen. You were included. Because as far as God is concerned, there is no time and space. So when God spoke that, God spoke to you as well. God spoke you into being as well. In fact, it, only time and space brought you. But from the beginning, when God spoke those words, you were part of the plan. Amen. Do you understand that? Yes. So whatever we are saying here, see yourself in that scripture. Do you get that? Amen. Before, even the foundations of the earth were laid. This was God's plan for you. Amen. Time and space brought you in here. <laughs> but that is also what God said. Let us make, what's your name, ma'am? Emmy. Emmy. So, in eternity past, God said, let us make Amy to look like us. Let her reflect our nature on earth. That was what God said about you. Amen. Even before your great, 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 great grandparents even came together, God had this plan about you. Amen. Hallelujah. Are, are, are you getting me? Sometimes our minds, because our minds are limited to time and space, we're not able to see that. But think about eternity past, even before the earth was created. That was God's plan for you. What did I say the title is? How to manifest your desire. Genesis 1, 26. Let us, God spoke, let us make human beings, human beings, in our image, make them reflecting 
our nature. Listen to this. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth, <laughs> over some of the earth. <laughs> what can we take out of all? Think about that. What can we take out of all? And over, over some creeping things that creepeth upon the earth. What did he say? Every. <laughs> over every. Now, watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Is that the King James we've got there? Yes, let's, let's put King James. Let's put King James there, please. I want you to see something there. Why did God say... Why did God say from the beginning, let us make man in our image and after our likeness? Why did he say that? He says, let them, make, let them reflect our nature. Why? I want to show you something. If you, if you have a King James Bible, please look at this. Look at this. Look at this. It says, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. Yes? And over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Now, many times when we are reading this scripture, we just read it within a second and we are gone. But you realize that I have repeated a particular conjunction throughout the verse. What, what is that conjunction? Sorry? And, 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 and. Just one verse. Now, I've got English majors in the house. I know I've got some English majors in the house. Now, if I were to write a paragraph to you, with so many ends in just one verse, what would you say to me? So many, words. many conjunctions. And, 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 and. I'd say it was important what you were saying. Very important. Sorry? I'd say it was very important what you were saying. Very important what I'm saying. That's right. Let's give her, let's, let's give her a clap. Yeah. <laughs> Do you understand? Many times we are told, you know, when you are enumerating something, just put a comma, yes, comma, comma, and then at the end you bring the conjunction and then you finish it up. That, that, that is how we are taught, isn't it? Yes. But if you want to make an important comment, you bring many ants, many ants, many ants. That is to say, don't rush through the verse. Because what I'm saying is very, very important. Amen. So when God said, let us make human beings, let us make Emmy in the likeness of our image, and let Emmy reflect our nature, God continued by an important message. He said, let Emmy have dominion. So the focus is dominion. The focus, the reason why you were created is to have dominion. And this dominion has been magnified in that one verse. Are you getting me? Amen. Are, are, are you getting me? Dominion. Now what is dominion? Dominion is to rule. In the old, in the, in, the, in the Hebrew, the word means to rule. In the New Testament, Greek, the word is basilia. It means kingdom. And kingdom is rule. So the kingdom of God, let me shock you. The kingdom
kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven is not church. It's the rule of God or the rule of heaven. Do you understand that? The kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven is the rule of God or the rule of heaven. That is the reason why you were created. You were created to rule over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. But if you are a child and you are afraid of spiders, when you know that you have authority over spiders, The spider sees you and it's afraid. It's running away. And you are also running away. <laughs> but when you mature, when you grow up and you know that all these things are under your feet, you are supposed to rule over them. Amen. You see them and you're not afraid because you know that you were given birth to, to rule Amen. over them. It says, every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Say, I was created, I was created to, rule to rule over the earth, over the earth. And, over and over every circumstance. Amen. Amen. Okay, so let's go quickly. Now, verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And he said. That's uh, 28. And God blessed them. And God blessed them. Once again, let me remind you, we are not talking about time and space. We're talking about timelessness. So when God blessed them, when God blessed you, even before you were giving birth to, I I just pray you understand this. When God blessed you, even before your great, 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 great grandparents thought of even meeting. That's right. When God blessed you, you were blessed. Let me share something with you. This may shock you. Nothing can stop that blessing. Amen. (laughs) <laughs> because when God speaks it's happened I like that I like that because when God speaks because God is sovereign when God speaks it becomes a law and that law is established nothing can change it the only person who can decide to either manifest or not is you no demon, no satanic whatever can stop that blessing from manifesting. Let me read a scripture in the uh, Message Bible to our hearing. Uh, 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 Romans eleven twenty nine. Listen to this. Listen to this. God's gifts <laughs> and God's call are under full warranty. Let me say it again. God's gifts and God's call are under full warranty. Not five years. Like some car manufacturers do. Not after five years, what happens? No warranty. But the Bible says God's call. God's call upon your life. And God's gift upon your life 
our Father full warranty. Listen to this. Listen to this. It says, never cancelled. Hey! It's never cancelled. And it's never rescinded. So, this is because when God speaks, it is established. From generation to generation, it is established. It is done. Nothing can change it. Do you understand this? Amen. Is this short man being too dangerous? Uh, am, am I being too dangerous? Are you following me? Amen. Uh, are you following this short man? Amen. Someone said short men are dangerous. So. But I think I'm dangerously good. Hallelujah. What say you? Very good. <laughs> or should I speak 1611 English? What sayest thou? <laughs> Amen. Amen. God's gifts and God's call are under full warranty. Second Peter 1 Peter 1.3 says, As his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Amen. Through the knowledge of him who called us. Now let me read again verse 28 of Genesis 1 to our hearing. That once again, I'm reading from the Message Bible. Listen, he says, God bless them. Listen, prosper. That is how the Message Bible puts it. And that is exactly, you see, the translation here actually depicts the, 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 or paints the right picture of the Hebrew. Because when God said prosper, it was not a suggestion. <laughs> so from the beginning, when God created you, even before you were born, God spoke into your life and said prosper. Prosper. Am I, am I communicating with us? Amen. Am I the only one enjoying this? Because as for me, something is doing my body. Something is doing me. Do you, do you understand that? I'm enjoying the word. Because before God, before my time came and I showed up here, God had already spoken about me and said, promise, prosper. Amen. And that was not a suggestion to me. It was a command. Hallelujah. Second, he says, reproduce. Not a suggestion, but a command. Fill the earth. Not a suggestion, but a command. Amen. Take charge. Yes. Not a suggestion, but a command. Listen to this. Listen to the last one. Be responsible. Many of us, <laughs> many of us are praying that God takes care of things in our lives. When before you were born, God said, you be responsible. God would not do what he has given you the power to do. Hallelujah. He says, you be responsible. People have said, oh, if God is in charge, why do we have people dying? Why do we have this happening? Why do we have all this happening? You know what? God said, human beings, be responsible. <laughs> so it's not God, but it's the wickedness of man. So you don't blame God, the heart of man. Are, 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 you, are you getting this? Yes. 
He says, be responsible. Be responsible. Say, I am. I am. I am. I am. Responsible. responsible. I am. I am. Responsible. responsible. See, Pastor, I like that personalized Psalm 91. It is, it is good. It is good to personalize scripture. Say it to yourself every day. That is good. Every day. Until you start seeing things change in your life. Amen? Amen. So take charge. So listen. I've written something down that I want to, I want, I, 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 I want to make sure that it goes the way I have written it. That's why I'm going to read it to you. So please listen. Once a word is spoken by God, it is already done. And the power that upholds its continuation is also established. Do you get that? Yes. You see, we saw the total eclipse last week. These were things God spoke into being thousands of years ago. And because the power that upholds that word is also established, nothing can stop that eclipse from coming to pass. That is the reason why they can, they can calculate and get maybe 20 years. They can get 30 years. They can get 100 years from now where the moon and the sun will be. Why? Because... Uh, yes, I like that. Because when, when God spoke the word, when God spoke the word, it was established. And the power that upholds the continuation of that word was also established. So nothing can stop it. Nothing. That is why they can calculate a thousand years from now and they would know where the sun and the moon will be because the way that spoke it cannot be changed. So during creation, when God spoke the purposes into the things he created, these purposes or reasons for their being were immediately done. And the power that upholds its continuation was also established. This power is what I call the law of desire. I, I pray you get this. <laughs> it means, therefore, that when mankind was created and the words prosper, reproduce, fill the earth, take charge, and be responsible were spoken to them, these words were immediately established as laws of desire or laws of longing. These laws are not yet to be established. <laughs> they are already established. Please be conscious of what I'm going to say now. And write this down. Don't, don't miss this. That is why you never say to anyone, God bless you. You know why? Because God has already blessed them. <laughs> because when God spoke the blessing into their lives, it already done. It's up to you to discover the blessing and walk in them. So I always say, stay blessed. Don't forget this. It's become a usual thing we say we don't even think about it. But you are already blessed. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Let's go on quickly. Quickly. This short man is dangerous. Now listen to this. This upholding power mm, ensures that human beings continue in their course and prosper that is to express the fulfillment of their being. These pronouncements are the forward, ever compulsion. They are a forward, ever compulsion. 
These pronouncements are that forward ever compulsion called desire which are constantly seeking expression within us. But unlike other created beings, the manifestation of these desires in mankind don't happen automatically. <laughs> Do you understand that? The sun and the moon. The moon uh, covered the sun's rays to the earth recently, and we saw the total eclipse. That happened automatically. You know why? Because the laws that God spoke into being to make sure that that happens can never be changed. The sun did not decide to do that last week. It followed a law. But unlike other created things, because we were created in the image and the likeness of God, the manifestation of that longing or that desire does not happen automatically. Because, write, write this down, one of the manifestations of a spirit is a will or a choice. <laughs> ah, if, I don't, if I don't run, if I don't run, I won't finish. <laughs> ah, dear. How much time have I got, Rev? Okay, all right. So, um, so you first have to become aware of your real identity, which I've made known to you, and then take practical steps to express it. So within you right now is a forward ever compulsion called desire, always seeking expression. It is called the law of prosperity. How many of us want to be wonderfully rich. Yes. That desire in you is not wrong because when God spoke that from the beginning that became an edge in you. We all know what desires are. We all know what longings are. We all know what a yearning is. How many of us desire to eat something we have never eaten before? Let me see by hand those of us who desire to eat something that you have never tasted before. You desire to eat it. Many times you desire something that you've tasted before. So if I'm saying that there is a law... <laughs> of prosperity within you. That is seeking expression. Because the Bible says it is the Lord that works in you. <laughs> Both to and to That's right. Do you, you understand that? So, there is a desire in you. There is a longing in you to express riches to express the fullness, that desire is something you know. Amen. You know why? Because that is who you are. Amen. I, I don't know whether, whether, whether you are getting me. Look, when I went to Nigeria this year, my host gave me different kinds of food. I did not desire to eat any other food apart from jollof because I know jollof, jollof rice. I have tasted it before. I know how it is like. So I always went for it. But the Nigerian food that I had never tasted before, I did not desire it. You desire to be rich because that is who you are. Amen. You don't see it in the physical, but that is who you really are. That is why you desire to be rich. Do you understand what I'm saying? Amen. You decide because deep within you, that is who you are. 
you know how it is like to be rich. Amen. That is who you are, deep within. But you are yet to see it outwardly. That is why I said how to manifest your desire. Do you understand now? Because that desire you have, God put it there. The desire you have to reproduce, God put it there. Some of us don't understand the desire. The hunger comes, we don't understand. So instead of manifesting it, we don't know what to do. We get frustrated. Because deep within, you want to express health. But you are not well. But deep within, you want to express wealth. But you are not well. How do you do it? Let me show you us quickly. Let's turn to Mark 11. Ah. Mark 11, 23. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatever he says. The Greek word used there for doubt is diakrino. It means to be in strife with yourself. It means to waver. It means to have a second opinion. It means to have a double-mindedness. The word, now, look at this. Doubt has been used as the opposite of belief, yes? So if doubt is double-mindedness, belief is what? Single-mindedness. Now look at this phrase, shall come to pass. Have you seen that phrase, shall come to pass? That phrase in the Greek is just one word. And let me tell you what it means. It means to have come into existence already. It means to have already happened. It means to have taken place already. So listen to this. He says, listen, listen. He says, <laughs> he says, but verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall be single-minded, that those things he says have already taken place. He shall have whatever he says. Why is he saying that you should believe that the things that you say are already done? Why? Because in natural fact, they are already done. The blessings we're talking about are already there. But he says, be single-minded and say it knowing that they are already done. Am I, am I communicating with us? Or I'm rushing too much? Do, do you get me? Shall come to pass is actually not in the future. It's actually in the past. That word used, that, that shall come to pass in the Greek, is actually used in the past. So he says, when you say something, believe that the things you are saying have already taken place and you will have whatever you say. So if you are already blessed, when you are saying it, don't say it as though it is yet to take place. You say it as it really is. That is, it has already taken place. So Jesus says this, Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore I say to you, what things soever you desire, <laughs> your desire, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you have already received them, and then you will have them. I have explained to you why you should believe that you've already received. Because from the very beginning, you were already blessed. So Jesus says, when you are praying, he says, 
when you are praying, when the desire comes, when the desire to be rich comes, because you are already rich, when you pray, believe that you have already been made rich and you shall become rich. Amen. So listen, when you are praying and you know that you are already rich, how do you pray then? Do you pray, God, make me rich? How do you pray? Thank you. Thank you. Or, in other words, do you know why the Bible says, let the weak say? It, is, it, should, it should be in the present tense because that is who you are. I'm not sure when someone asks you, Amy, <laughs> Are you going to be a woman? I'm not sure you would say, yes, I'm going to be a woman. What would you say? I am a woman. So because you are really rich, you don't say, I will be rich. You say, I am rich. Listen, you are not neglecting the fact that at the moment, it is not so. What you are saying is this. My yesterday's confession has given birth to today. So my today's confession would give birth to tomorrow. So you are not saying that, you are not saying that at the moment you are not sick. But what you are saying is, I'm changing it from being sick Hallelujah. to being Amen. strong. Amen. Our, spirits, our spirits, we create by speech. Amen. So, I'm ending with this. Please, be very conscious of the way you pray from this day forward. Amen. Never pray in the future tense. It will never, it will never come. Pray in the present. Amen. Let the weak say. I am strong. Let the weak say. I am strong. Let the weak say. I am strong. Let the poor say. I am rich. Let the weak say. I am strong. Let the poor say. I am rich. Stay blessed.